dear friends uh, after a quick review of newton's laws of motion we would be discussing a uh, very interesting problem uh, which helps us explain the concepts of newton's laws of motion uh, in a <clears throat> nice way so that problem which we are going to discuss is the famous problem called as horse and cart problem okay so before going into that problem uh, let me just quickly revise uh, what the concepts uh, were uh, which we discussed in the last few lectures okay so let us begin with the uh, newton's laws of motion first three laws and then we would begin with the <coughs> uh, actual problem so what is the first law of motion we said we said that the first law of motion is a very interesting uh, kind of stuff uh, which talks about an object being in the state of rest or the object being in the state of uniform motion okay unless acted upon by an unbalanced force so this is the newton's first law of motion which uh, in a simple manner says that if the unbalanced forces are zero if the unbalanced forces or the net unbalanced force is zero the acceleration is zero the acceleration is zero the body would remain in its state of rest or in the state of uniform motion this was a very interesting idea which newton formulated as a first law of motion okay. uh, in the second law of motion uh, newton talked about uh, what is known as the mathematical formula for acceleration or momentum where he said that the acceleration is the ratio of net force upon mass or in terms of uh, change in momentum he said that a rate of change of momentum mv upon t is equal to net force so what it means is that whenever there is a net unbalanced force there will be acceleration okay that is second law first law says that when acceleration is zero the body would not uh, change its state of rest or state of uniform motion when the forces are zero okay that is first law and when there are there are forces what happens when there are unbalanced forces there will be acceleration and that acceleration is given by net force upon the mass this is newton's second law of motion or in terms of momentum it says that the rate of change of momentum which is this rate of change of momentum is directly proportional to the net force proportional to the net force this is the second law and we said that this second law can be also written as f into a f net is equal to m into a where a is the acceleration and m is constant m is constant the third law of motion uh, we said is the very interesting law wherein we say that whenever there is an object and this object exerts a force on the second object then the second object would also exert an equivalent op opposite force on the first object so for every action in nature there is equivalent opposite reaction and this action and reaction forces they act on two different bodies and the action force and reaction force though they are equal they act on two different bodies and hence they do not cancel each other forces act on two different bodies on two different bodies and hence they do not cancel each other this is also a very important aspect which we emphasize during our lectures okay and that is the reason why in spite of being equal and opposite they do not cancel each other okay uh, now we will go to this famous problem which i was referring to uh, which helps us explain or understand the newton's laws of motion exactly okay so this is called as a horse cart problem okay and as you see over here there is a horse this is a horse and this is a cart 
Now, what is this problem? This problem is often raised in order to confuse the students. So, let us say that the horse is attached to the cart and the horse tries to pull the cart. Okay. Horse will try to pull this car. Right? And then, you know that by Newton's third law, the cart must exert means the horse is trying to pull this car and the car must exert an equal and opposite force. So this, this is the force. These are the two equal and opposite forces. Okay, uh, one is this force exerted by the horse and force exerted by the horse on the car. And this is the force exerted by the cart on the horse. Okay, so these two forces uh, from the Newton's second law of motion, third law of motion, they are equivalent opposite. Okay, they are equivalent opposite. Negative for opposite sign. Now, if they are equivalent opposite, the question arises as to why then? If then they would cancel out, and then why would the horse pull the cart? Because if the forces, net forces are zero, if the net force is zero, net force is this F C H plus F S C is negative sign here. Yeah? Okay, so this is zero. Then from the Newton's second law, you know that acceleration would be that force upon mass, it has to be zero. So uh, it might appear that because these two forces are equal and opposite, the horse uh, will not be able to move the car. But from our experience, we know that the car actually moves. The car actually moves. So why, why then the car moves? What is the reason that the car is moving? Right. So in order to understand this, we need to apply the laws of motion correctly. What we have done here is we have not applied the laws of motion correctly, and what mistakes we have committed that will be understood shortly. So for understanding this, we need to first consider. The system. When you apply the laws of motion, we need to first consider what is the system we are talking about. Now, are we talking about moving only the horse or are we talking about moving only the carriage? No, we are talking about moving this entire thing. Okay, so this entire thing becomes our system. Okay, this entire thing becomes our system. So this is the system under consideration, and we need to apply the Newton's laws to the system. And for applying this, we would first break this into two different small systems and then we would understand what exactly is happening. Okay, so let us do this. So first we will consider the carriage, okay, or cart. So this is the cart, cart I have considered here. Okay, this is the cart which we are considering here for analysis. And you know that uh, when the cart is at rest, so initially the cart is at rest, Cart is at rest. What do you see? What are the forces on this car? So on this car, there is a force of resistance because of friction. There is a frictional force okay, between the car uh, wheel and the ground, okay, which will try to resist this motion of the car. And there is a force of this horse exerted by the Horse, okay, this, this, this is this force. So this force, we'll call it as B. Okay, we we'll call this as B. So this is the force exerted by the horse, by horse in the forward direction, in forward direction, right? This is the force which is exerted by the horse in the forward direction. And this A is the force exerted by the ground on the wheel, okay, ground on the cart, okay, and this is the resistance force, this is the backward direction, this is in the backward direction, and when the cart is at rest, this two forces, that is A has to be equal to that is this force has to be equal to 
this force. Okay, so this is one way of looking at it. So we what we have done now is that we have broken this entire system into two different systems. So the first system is a car. Okay, now second system is a horse. So when this is a horse again, when the horse is at rest, horse is at rest, right? Uh, so this is what we, this is the same repetition. Okay, where this we had already sent, seen that horse is at rest. This acceleration is zero, and hence force of A is equal to force of B. But when there's an acceleration towards the right, when the acceleration is, when the horse actually now, when the horse is not at rest, you know that, let us say that horse starts moving now. Horse exerts, exerts his muscle power, okay, his muscle power, and he tries to move this, tries to move this car, and he, and he tries to accelerate it towards the right. He tries to accelerate it towards the right. So when he tries to accelerate it towards the right, this force, this force, you see, this force B is greater than force A. Force B is greater than force A. If not, because this net force is what in this case? Net force is F B minus F A. And what is the acceleration direction? It is towards the right. So for this acceleration to be positive, acceleration to be positive, that is for this car to move, this net force has to be greater than zero. It means that this has to be greater than, FB has to be greater than FB. Okay. okay, so the horse should exert a greater pressure, uh, greater force than the frictional force in order to move this car. Okay, so this force has to be greater. And then, and then what happens to the horse? So when the acceleration is zero, this horse, this horse also, also pushes the ground, pushes the ground with, with a greater force, with a greater force such that the ground will also push the horse with a force D. So what is this force D? Force D is the force exerted by force exerted by the ground by the ground on the horse on the horse and why is the ground exerting the uh, force on the horse because the horse is exerting the force on the ground so the ground is going to push this horse forward okay so this is the forward force this is the forward force and we know that because the acceleration is towards the right F T minus F C has to be greater than zero. If it is not zero, then uh, this this horse will not move ahead. Now the question is: so F T minus F C is not equal to zero, or F T is greater than F C. Okay, and F net is F T minus F C, which is greater than zero and this acceleration is towards the right this is the acceleration now look at these two diagrams so look at this b and c what are b and c so if you look at the directions b is like this and c is like this this b and c are equal okay from the newton's third law from the newton's third law okay so though they are equal Okay, they are the internal forces. They are the internal forces which do not matter. Okay, uh, because what happens is if you do a summation, okay, what is the net force if you consider this entire system as a single system? Now, what we do is that uh, let us now uh, do the analysis for cart plus horse. First, what we did first, we did analysis for cart, then we did analysis for horse. And now we'll be doing the analysis for cart plus horse. Okay, what was our analysis for cart? Let us look at this. When the acceleration is towards the right, our analysis of cart was F net is F B minus F. F net is F B minus F A. F B minus F A. And this is equal to mass of the cart 
into acceleration okay this is of the car okay for the horse what is uh, what is the newton this is from newton second law okay? this is from newton's second law for the horse what 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 is the equation fd minus fc is greater than 0 fd minus fc is equal to greater than 0 and it is equal to mass of horse into the acceleration okay now we know what we know that fv is equal to fc how, how is that known fv is, is equal to fc because from the newton's third law of motion fv is equal to fc okay this is from the third law of motion that is there is action and reaction pair third law of motion now if you add these three equations you consider this equation one two and three so so from one two and three you will understand that it is the integration it is the analysis of cart plus horse now so what would be that your b minus fa plus fd minus fc is equal to m of cart plus m of horse into the acceleration into the acceleration now this fd and fc would cancel so what it what is remaining fd minus fa is equal to m cart that is mass of car plus mass of horse into acceleration and this answers why there is an acceleration so why is there acceleration why is that the cart moves the cart moves because the cart moves because this fd minus fa upon this total m we we'll call this as total m is greater than zero and why is that so because fd is greater than fa fa is greater than fa okay now what is fd and what is fa fd is this and this is fd okay and fa is this so fd is the frictional force frictional force okay of ground on horse horse feet actually is greater than frictional force frictional force of ground on the wheels of cart now this is very important what is very important that you know that this this is greater why is this greater because you know that this wheels are they are rolling resistance it's a wheel no so the resistance is minimum this resistance is minimum that is why you are using wheels okay so when you are having wheels of the car the friction resistance is less so f a is less than f b and that is the reason why this f net f net which is f b minus f uh, f b minus f a is greater than zero and because this is greater than zero the acceleration is greater than zero and the meaning of acceleration is greater than zero is that the horse and the cart would move okay so why is the horse and the cart moving the horse and the cart is moving because the fd is greater than fa or this this resistance okay when it is moving okay this is now stationary but when it moves this resistance okay is greater than this resistance at this point okay and that is the reason why uh, the horse cart problem uh, gives you a solution by application of second law and third law saying that there is an acceleration in the forward direction right so do not be confused by such kind of problems though we would feel that uh, from the newton's third law this force is cancel out and the horse would never be in a position to pull the cart but we have now proved that this is perfectly possible and for doing this analysis we need to take uh, the entire system into consideration we need to take into consideration all the forces which are acting and analyze it step by step that is how the problems of physics are to be solved involving newton's laws of motion so this problem horse cart problem is a famous problem which helps you understand and apply the newton's laws of motion thank you very much